My guest has traveled all the way from England to tell his story. Stay tuned to find out what he said. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you joining with us. As I mentioned, we have our guest, Michael Lake, coming all the way from England. You didn't come just for the show, but uh, we appreciate this opportunity to have you share your story. And uh, how long have you been here? Just under, just about a week. Oh, and is this your first time in England, in America? Absolutely, yes. Is it? Um, LDS all my life, but first time. Actually first coming time over. coming yeah. to Zion. Huh? Yeah, and it was actually the first time uh, sitting in Temple Square last night. <laughs> oh, was that? So, okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, he, uh, you have such an interesting story. Tell us, uh, where, were you, where were you born and raised there in England, I guess? I was raised in England, yeah. um, a little place called Stetchford, which is down Birmingham Way. Okay. Uh, shortly moved to Acox, Acox Green and then Litchfield. Um, my dad... At the time, used to work for the MOD, uh, so designing. What's an MOD? Ministry of Defence. Oh, okay. Um, and he was designing tank shells. Oh, wow. And explosives. And he joined the church. And so, how old was he when he converted? It's hard to say before my time. I was born in the Covenant, so oh, <laughs> about three years, I was probably three years beyond. Three years before beyond. Before that. Huh? Three years before my, I think. Now, this was back when, was London the only temple? The London Temple was that the only one. London in was the only temple. The church membership was a little over a million. Oh, okay. So we're wow. going back a long, yeah. a long, a long time. But they got married in the London they, Temple. They got married in the temple, okay. and he okay. basically he lost his job when he joined the church because it was deemed a security risk. Really? Okay, so oh um, there's an element to... Did he bounce back from that? or? <laughs> he, di he, he did. He had several other jobs, including working for the church at one point, in, uh, repairing um, the heating systems oh. and uh, maintenance systems yeah. in Northern Ireland and around the UK. I don't think we can appreciate the impact that a person has sometimes when they change yeah. or, you know, from... I guess become Mormon in, in England. And I, was, I was surprised when I found out, but um, yeah. but yes, um, there's some hesitation, yeah. <laughs> should we say, from... Brothers right. and sisters, how many do you have? Right, uh, three sisters, three one sisters. older, um, two younger. Um, okay. Oh, I say, all had a pretty good time really growing up initially in the church for, up till the, the teens, but... Uh, so very active. Then things, then things varied. Went to church. I guess was it a branch or a ward at that point, or Ooh, a state? It, it, um, membership in England fluctuates a little bit. Yeah. Um, it went through spells of being a ward, then but down to a branch, and then back up again. <laughs> okay. okay, so it sort of. It, um, the membership, the membership is quite, tends to be sort of uh, quite low, quite outnumbered in, 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 in relation to the general populace and the general yeah. population. Um, and so the units are quite small in size. So generally. what did you think of, uh, uh, well, uh, you took seminary. I took seminary, um, struggled with that with the hours, I'll be honest. Because you had like to the, take it early in the morning, right? I had to take it early in the morning yeah. and I was also... Around the time that that started happening, I got into shooting. I was doing air rifle shooting. Oh. And that had started progressing. There was shooting competitions. Wow. Which meant being out in the evenings a yeah. lot. And that led to eventually that I joined the national squad at about 14. So I became wow. the youngest Pretty good, huh? person back then at that time yeah. to join the, <clears throat> um, the under 21 air rifle squad for the country. Hmm. Um, but that meant a lot of practice yeah. as well. So between practice, homework, and whatever you... Yeah. Do you have a mandatory requirement to go into military, or is that volunteer in, in England? Um, this was not military, this was... No, no, but I yeah. meant in general. Do, do the no, no, uh, we have volunteer. The volunteer military. army, okay. Uh, we, we believe very much that uh, the best soldiers are the ones who want to be there. Want to be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as opposed to the, yeah, those so of well. us that get drafted yeah, into so it. it yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless there's a war or something, you know, people generally aren't drafted, there'll be no... Yeah. Um, people should choose the military as an option. And, and uh, a lot of people I've known have loved it. You know, they've, they've worked uh, 
Uh, I remember somebody who worked with the Navy, spent 15 years in the Navy and they went into police force and yeah. what have you. But um, yeah, the great, you know, many people get opportunities, training and yeah. a future for Can it. use it for, for yeah. other stuff. So you, any questions you ever had about the church growing up or anything? Was it? Uh, yes, yes, did you? Um, absolutely. Um, I was baptized obviously at eight as tradition okay. sort of goes. Um, oh, do I honestly, I believed, yeah. but you know, as, as a child, you, 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 take, you take teaching very seriously with your parents and your elders and your church sure. and things. So there's an element of I've always had that relationship with Jesus and with God. As a, you know, I'd pray, I'd look out the window and <laughs> what have you. So my eighth, um, my eighth birthday, yes, I remember being baptised and I remember sort of you, there was a feeling of change, you know, of, of something coming over me um, as I went down um, into the water and especially more so during the Holy Ghost section, which they do it in two parts. Yeah. Uh, being... Um, Born in the covenant, that means I can actually be baptized the same day. You know, so it's one straight after the other. So you oh. have the baptism and the uh, well, and set the part at the same, the same time. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Back then. <laughs> um, well, as I'm, I'm a dinosaur, I'm going back a bit, so maybe, maybe they're changing it now, but that no, is certainly back then. Definitely, that, that, back then. Uh, but that, back then, that was, that was, that was, that's what happened. Um, and then we're back in an era when the church used to sort of have morning and afternoon sessions, you know, so we'd go two, yeah. to, two to three times. Yeah, I remember that on very that well. As well. And then um, primary and Relief Society right. on the week, during that's, the week. Is, yeah. yeah. So I found the church commitments at times very difficult, quite demanding. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but, but yes, I had, a, I had, a, I had a love for God, but a lot of it's on parents' testimony. A lot, sure. of, a lot of it will be on yeah. the... Uh, then I guess you became a deacon at age 12. At and, 12, yes. Uh, teacher and priest and all that stuff. And yes, and, and I remember being a deacon with... Um, it's a friend who was basically about 28 years old. Because this is back in the... Just on the borderline of when you almost had to earn... You had to go through your posts. Even though, even whenever even, you converted, yeah, yeah. whenever you converted, so he's, 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 he was an, he was an adult, but he had to earn his priesthood. Be so deacon. he was starting as a deacon, and oh. um, bless his heart, he was he was black. Oh, and we, we were talking one day on the bench, and he um, turned around and admitted that um, it goes back to I think it's about seventy eight ish when basically they, 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 they gave him the priesthood. And he couldn't take the change. He felt that why couldn't they give, have given him the Magnificent Priesthood earlier? <laughs> um, good question. Uh, which is a good question. It was yeah. a fair question. Uh, from my age at twelve, didn't really fully appreciate it. But right. But uh, yeah, he left the church. Well, uh, did that, did yeah. that make you think a little bit too about about that policy? It, it did at that time. It, 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 I lost uh, one friend that way, and I lost another one in Birmingham when I was slightly younger. And uh, Dignish, we, we used to sort of play every best best mates sort of thing at school. <laughs> and obviously, you wanted to join the church. I wanted to join the church. Yeah. And I arranged for him to hear the message sure. one one day. And next thing I'm told is uh, we're not allowed to play with him anymore. The sort of thing or associate. And it came out on the grapevine later on. It's to do with the the, the policy, the beliefs, which go behind the scenes, really. Yeah, you know, right. as to the fact of the worthiness, the pre-mortal existence, right? Uh, nonsense, and um, that sort of <laughs> um, spiked our friendship, sort of thing. And so we wound up losing a friend. Um, wow. uh, so Interesting, the policies of the church and. It, how they impact us. And. It's, it, yeah. The annoying thing is, you're not told, from my point of view as a child, I wasn't told the full truth as to exactly why I was just told I can't yeah. associate yeah, can't with associate. him. But it, it was to do with the fact they'd been offended because obviously what happened is the missionaries had come in and talked to them and right. taught certain principles and then obviously related <laughs> to the skin colour in the past, which were, which were genuine church teachings at the time. And it didn't go down very well with the host family and uh, a lesson mm. friend that way. Wow. So you go on and, and to school and everything, everything. Um, 
And then what happens after high school? I suppose what happened at school, about 14, okay. um, because my parents were very keen on the church. Um, the, the, so my dad had given up quite a lot for the church, and my mum was very uh, strong and staunch in the church. But what I hadn't really got is my own full testimony of the gospel, because he had these sort of small little questions like yeah. a, friend, a friend who left and right. one or two little things. and. Yeah. Um, so there's an element of, I had to find my own conversion oh. to Mormonism still. And um, I was in a family more or less where they turn around and demand that you go, even if they don't take you in pyjamas. <laughs> Literally, you're, you're, going face, face you're going to church, even if you're in your pyjamas. Sort of right. Um, I, that came to, as you get older, you get, you get to 13, 14, you're not quite so easily pushed around. Yeah. And there's an element at that point um, it, I needed to know for myself because it was causing fr time to cause, cause friction in the family okay. and myself. So um, I remember it was a Saturday evening at one point and just breaking down in tears and crying out unto God sort of thing as to is the church true and what have you. This was about November, about November time. And rightly or wrongly, I had the innocence of a child. Sure. Uh, so I'd had a relation, always had a relationship where I'd talk to God and I used to ask for signs. <laughs> okay. You're not supposed to ask for signs, I really understand that now, but back then my relationship was signs, worked through, can, sure. can we communicate it? So I turned around and said, well, Lord, if the church is true in that, can we have a sign which <laughs> I, we can work with? And it's got to be something mean you can understand. Um, and something which can't easily be mistaken. And I was into weather at the time, so I turned around and said, Lord, so if the church is true, on well, this Saturday night, can I have a tornado? And I said, I don't want it to do any harm. <laughs> no harm, what, <laughs> yeah, no harm, just a little tornado sort of thing, just a, a sign yeah. that everything's okay. And looking out the window, praying, nothing all night, early hours, nothing. And eventually fell asleep, get up the next morning, and it's Sunday, you go to church. And I was down at that point because, you know, I, I, I really put, give my heart and everything to the Lord sort of thing. And I went to service and I was really, sort of, yeah, a bit, 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 a bit ticked off. And then my dad says, oh, we were going to do some home teaching in the afternoon. And we're doing some home teaching in the afternoon, uh, so it's Sunday afternoon. And we went round the other side of Litchfield, where we're home teaching. And the guy goes, did you hear what happened last night? I said, he said, what? He said, a tornado just skimmed the outskirts of Litchfield, and destroyed a barn, nothing was injured, but it just <laughs> leveled. Wow. Leveled the thing. And uh, so I thought, mm, okay, maybe, you know, who, know, who <laughs> knows, there could be something to this. Um, and then, then the sceptic creeps in, thinking, well, maybe my dad overheard me praying because I was, you know, I was pouring out my heart to yeah. God and it's home teaching. Maybe it's just a friend of <laughs> Your dad. something he said. Maybe it didn't really happen, you know. So it got to a Monday morning, going to school. And apparently um, it turned out that, you know, it hit the TV. There'd been, the, been a tornado. And there's actual proof that it actually happened sort of thing. And, um, yes, yeah, so at that point, just, uh, that's when I started to really sort of accept the gospel more so. I can understand as a conversion that. At that point. So, so there's that. The sign yeah. come and, <laughs> and 14's an interesting age for Mormons anyway, because that's the age Joseph Smith was when, it is, when yeah, he went, supposedly, when he yeah. went into the, the grove to, to pray. So 14's yeah. kind of a, it's, a it's, time it's, to search and, it was, yeah, and confirm uh, and so on. Uh, but my, I always had that, that sort of relationship, um, you know, growing up. Um, my father used to go mad at me at times for shooting, you know, saying, well, you've got to go practice more, and you've got, you've got your homework, you've got everything, you know, and, yeah. and at times I just want to play with friends. And, it's, and this one time he goes, um, he goes, well, if you're not going to practice enough, that's it, I'm taking all the guns off you, I'm going to take, you know, your hobby's gone, you know, but it's, it's, you either do it or you it's gone. It tomorrow, 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 it, yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow it's gone. Yeah. 
And we had one of these other nights where we were sort of crying out and sort of saying, Lord, you know, what do, you know I love my hobby, but whatever. And uh, so I think it's about 7.30 that evening, the phone went that very night. And it was a call up for the national squad, which has been selected <laughs> in, uh, in, in, to join the under-21 airgun squad. Wow. To which my dad had a sudden change of heart. <laughs> sure. <laughs> At that point, this idea could shoot. <laughs> And as things carried on. So, How long were you in, with that group? Uh, it's about 17, 17, uh, 17 and a half. But, um, and this is rifle? These are rifles? These are, these are air rifles. Yeah. Um, uh, they're, quite, they're quite heavy guns, you mm. know, about you know, sort of nine, ten pound guns. For, so for a 14 year old, it was. Yeah, a lot too. It was, quite, it was a lot. And um, yeah. back then, unfortunately, I was as skinny as a rake. So <laughs> I, I was, until I got married, I was really thin. <laughs> Uh, so it used to just be a pile of bones, sort of shoot, shooting, but... Could actually um, lay down and shoot. <laughs> no, it's, it's shot standing. Oh, so did it's, you? It's shot standing up oh. at 10 metres at a tar target, you know, no real bigger than a pinprick yeah. sort of thing. But uh, So really no question in your mind then that the church was true, right? Uh, no, and the church used that a lot at times. We, you know, some of the shooting as it went on through the years, uh, they used the PR in the press and the papers, oh, really? Richard Mercury to actually sort of mention the church and oh, they do would. stuff, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so that happens. Then what? Uh, what's what's next? What's next was um, my scared rebellion, I suppose. At some <laughs> point, um, after seeing certain things, which to me were miraculous, um, we started getting a bit terrified as to well. What else is out there? Because we talk about the devil quite a lot, we also in the church. Oh, yeah. And so there's a, a spell that I started getting a bit sort of uh, daunted. Well, what's really going on? Uh, confused things. Um, but um, now I sort of um, had a rebellious sort of streak yeah. uh, for, 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 um, for a spell. Uh, that, I said, that led to an instance of. Um, Finding a, find a nice girl, uh, we're caught, you know, caught him for about a year and a half. Um, and this is Jan? This is Jan. And she, you end up getting married in the temple? We wind up getting married in the temple, yeah. yes. In the London temple again, I guess. I uh, yeah, it's a bit unusual. Um, we were, no, we, I didn't serve a mission. Oh, okay. You see, um, we were technically supposed to serve a mission first. And what happens was uh, both our families would break us up. My family wanted wanted an LDS uh, partner. There's hated LDS, and there's a few. Her, fa her family. Her was family. Yeah, her family was dead LDS. set against the against oh. the church. Um, and yes, we had a lot of problems with them trying to uh, trying to break us up. And, and you were trying to teach her the church, right? We we're trying to teach her the church, yeah. um, but there's. We took advice and counsel from, let's say, church was a lot smaller in that day, in, sure. in that day and age, and a lot of um, senior leaders would come over to England on and off, uh, particularly Birmingham area, London, and we're at a conference, and we we actually asked pre asked the question to uh, President Hunter at the time, um, who wasn't before he became a prophet. Yeah. Um, and we were sitting, we had a conversation with him, he says, no, he says, um, the church policy is, if you find your spiritual partner, he says, you marry your partner. Go ahead and marry Go ahead and marry your partner, the mission waits. Okay. Sort of thing. Um, so that was a council. Now, was um, she a member when you got married? Um, and she converted? Well, well, she was, because I baptised her myself beforehand. Right. It was a prerequisite, oh, got... prerequisite to getting married. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> so, so. sure she had, and she had to be that to be married in the In effect, yes. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. Did she have to wait a year? Yes, we had to wait oh, okay. a year uh, sure. for it. But, um, but we... The church communities are very good. They look after you know, each other, in a sense. And uh, we, we got married about the Christmas Eve. Well, and you also felt like you were doing missionary work by sharing the gospel with her, and and well, and how was that experience to to see her convert to the church? It must have been a thrill. At the time, I loved it. Yes, yeah. you know, it was a lovely, warm feeling. You know, we we were literally best friends, soul partners, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, we've done. We've been married for over thirty years now. Yes, My how many years. kids? Three. Three. All boys. All boys. Huh? Yeah. 
Um, you had three sisters, and now you have three boys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had three sisters. I had three but, sisters, yeah. yeah. One older, yeah. Well, so, um, it, she go, so what did you think of the temple when you finally went? <sighs> Scared. Scared. <laughs> um, the reason being... The, the reason, the reason being we, we struggled um, making a living for a while. My wife's disabled. Um, she, she had a stroke when she was eight years old. Mm. Um, and when, when she started having children, she, you know, it, that, that, that's it. So, so we went down to one income. So oh. we're living on one income for a while. Now, this, the story of the temple was one that uh, we had actually at one point lost our house because we'd been renting, and we wound up actually homeless briefly. Oh, my. And funny enough, we wound up in a place in Telford called St. George's. Which is, <laughs> St. George's. Yeah, St. George's, yeah, the irony of it. Where you're heading, <laughs> Maybe we're heading, heading later tomorrow, on, but something, yeah. yeah. Just different continents, whatever. <laughs> you. Um, and, yes, that was hard, because we had a, a child and myself and my wife, and we were actually in a homeless hostel uh, briefly for a spell. And some of the family there, well, lots of people around, were all depressed. And we had an, uh, an experience with a, a, friend, a friend at the time in the hostel where they sneaked upstairs and basically they started drinking. Mm. Okay. And so, so we were up there in the attic. So we were up there in the attic. <laughs> and I, being a bit naive at the time, I didn't understand about um, the candles and things. Apparently, I want this, this, uh, this one friend is half clairvoyant. Oh. And he got involved in actually trying to summon something up. <laughs> and uh, we had a bad experience mm. up, up, in, up in that loft. Um, that was scary. Where it's scary, you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel something very unpleasant, something very horrible. To which, you know, we all, you know, there's a guy there who's a leather jacket, a you know, biker jacket, and he's shivering. It was that cold. Oh. And the thing's coming. And he, we all fled downstairs. I got downstairs, and the first thing I did was call my dad, who was obviously a high priest. Yeah. Uh, discuss it with him, explain it. Um, he obviously forgave me, forgave me, prayed over it, and we put a blessing on nothing being anywhere near our family in that presence of the hostel. Right. But I was very specific only to make it on the presence of our family in the hostel because of the fact of going outside would it interrupt other, other people's free agency. Yeah. Right, it's not my right to right. Inf 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 right. Inf infringe others. Um, that night I had a dream which was absolutely crazy because it's a beautiful field and there's people going into they're going, they're going down to talk to this guy on the tractor and they're disappearing off to this wonderful place. And in, in this dream, I met a person on the tractor called Malachi. Malachi? Yeah, funny enough. I didn't mean much to me at the time, but at the time, it's, you know, but the, the name was Malachi. And these people were going up and they're saying a few strange words, which I couldn't make out, and then disappearing into this other nice pavilion part. Um, when we actually went to the town, uh, well, there's two, two, two parts of the story, I suppose. One was, um, it turned out this friend's relative was one of the top clairvoyants in Telford. Mm -hmm. And we had an incident, an incident the next day where he wanted to go and get a potty for, for one of his children. And we went round to his house and you know, this road to his house and you could feel something in the house. It was just scary. And we were, we were shown in, he was in the, apparently having a seance next 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 room. We were shown in through the corridor, turn left, into the into the lounge. And we're sitting there thinking, this is gonna be interesting. Nothing is allowed within the confines. Yeah. I'll give him a blessing, a priesthood blessing that nothing could be in, um, in the same room. And the phone went, and uh, apparently one of his relatives was at death's doorbed. So he ended the seance, he walked in, and you could feel presences coming down the corridor. And sure enough, as soon as they took their foot across the threshold, nothing, gone. Went away. He went away. 
And the guy came down, he sat down, and we just looked at each other, each other for 20 minutes. Nobody spoke, sort of thing. And that was, to me, you know, a magical moment of the priesthood. Yeah. The things you could feel, you feel, you see it. And then on the temple, where shortly after when we did go to the temple, I was sitting there and we got up to the moments and, you know, they recited this was before they, they changed the program now. Right. They knocked those words out. Right. But originally, sure enough, there's three words in the foreign language, oh so, Lord, hear me prayer, yeah. in, in, the, in, the, in the other language. And that was horrific because I'd actually been given that set of words words before ever going to the temple. Oh no. And I could not understand how could I have possibly known those. Not being taught those words before ever going to the temple. So we wound up having a chat with the temple with the temple presidents in London and the people workers at the time over in. What do you say? Um <laughs> it's quite a quite quite taken back. But um but in, in short no, it's, it's obviously just uh, the Lord's working in, um, with you. So yeah. that led to, uh, as I say, a very strange life in a church setting, which makes it even more bizarre what happens later on. But anyway. Well, I think what's interesting is, and I don't know that people outside of the church can appreciate this, but our whole life is committed to this program. Everything that happens gives us a, a further testimony that the church is true, mm -hmm. right? And, and any time there's a problem or anything, we turn to the church and we turn to our faith. We, and, and as a, we sacrifice things for the church. We, we just have that sense that, uh, that all the answers are there yeah. and, and that, that that's what we need to hold on to. Yeah. And every little thing that happens it kind of supports that, that testimony that we have of the church and yeah. makes, it, makes it more real in our life. Oh, it does. Uh, yeah, yeah. The fact that, you know, um, the belief system becomes so strong, you know, that you, you yeah. really, really nothing can seemingly dent it. And I think that's what uh, one of the real challenges of those of us that have left is because you have to overcome that hurdle uh, or that mountain of, mm. of uh, feelings that, um, that are there. So, yeah. After this experience, or maybe you have more to share, but what happens? You're just active and your family's growing? And We're active, we settle down. Um, we, uh, family wise, like I said, we had a few more, few more, ch you know, few more children. Um, I, uh, I think I say things are reasonably okay in the church. I've always been a bit of uh, perhaps a liberal or rebel. <laughs> Um, I was always perplexed, like, why couldn't women have the priesthood a little bit? So if I was going to send um, angels down to earth, I'd like them to have the power or authority to do it. Um, Rebel, I wonder if that also translates to thinker, seeking after truth and, and thinking. I, I, I tend to, <laughs> you I, think so? <laughs> well, I tend to be accused of being a bit of a deep thinker. Yeah. Um, I've met uh, you know a few people at university and things who say the same sort of thing. That they, although technically I'm more of a I don't know tradesman, I'd yeah. say, but I'd say I'm more of a tradesman by nature. There is an element of, of um, a lot of my life has been sent uh, well being with IT, analysing problems, trying to solve problems, yeah. trying to dream up problems that don't even exist yet and solve them. <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, there is there's, there's that sort of thinking out of the box, thinking in the box. You know, yeah. trying trying to solve things. Just real quick, and we'll wrap up this session. We're going okay. to do a second one with you. But what was your relationship with Jesus during all this time? When you think back on, was it, was it the church? Was it Jesus? Was it God? What, what was your strength? What was your foundation there? I think at the time I'd have trouble separating the church and Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it has, they, they, they tended to merge into one. Yeah. You know, the, you know, between between the Godhead and the, and the Church, they was seen more or less as one uh, one part of it. Um, obviously, obviously, the real bonding because of some of those bizarre experiences, like the tornado and things, would right. be would be really with, still with Jesus, you know, and and and, and God. So um, I always found it myself close and actually closer to them than the priesthood holders okay. or, the, or the prophets or people understand. And I guess my experience was is 
those kinds of things proved to me the church was true. I didn't, I didn't sense that I was, that, that Jesus was any more of the Savior or Christ or my Redeemer or anything. It was more that the church was true. Those were the kind of answers that I feel like I got when, when I'm praying or in experiences that I had. Well, Mike, uh, it's gone quickly, okay. and so, so we're, we're going to we'll do a second one, and uh, we appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>